Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be taking a look at case departures from the Tarawa. Um, with each case we will go through the theory and then go through the practical. So let's start with case 1. So before we fly from the Tarawa let's learn a little bit about her. She's a Tarawa class amphibious assault ship. Her displacement is 38,900 tonnes. Her length is 820 feet. Beam 106 feet draft 26 feet has a top speed of 24 knots that's 44 kilometers an hour or 28 miles per hour um, can carry 2000 plus marines 960 plus officers and um, can carry up to 35 helicopters and eight av8bs across the deck you can see 10 arrow markings these are helicopter landing areas and of course you've got the centre line as well as the nozzle rotation line at the bow of the deck. So let's just take a look at the nozzle rotation line. Um, so as I say it's located at the bow of the ship and um, unlike land based um, takeoffs where we would rotate the nozzles at a, um, a set speed we rotate the nozzles as soon as the front wheel hits the nozzle rotation line no matter what speed we're at um, that is when we're required to ro rotate the nozzles not before not after but on the line so yeah just remember as soon as the yellow line disappears under the nose of the aircraft it's time to rotate the nozzles for case one the aircraft taking off should proceed straight ahead on the base recovery course or brc climbing to a maximum of 500 feet after passing 7 nautical miles DME, an unrestricted climb may be conducted in Visual Meteorological Conditions, or VMC. Rendezvous is done in accordance with briefing. So the first thing we need to do is check the setup. So looking around the cockpit, we're going to double check that everything is where it should be. Um, lights are all how they should be. Stow stop to 60 degrees, as that's where the nozzles are coming down to check the nose wheel steering's on, check the flaps are in stall with the green light above and the droop light on the cautionaries. Next we're going to check the left MPCD for TACAN and if make sure that the TACAN is on and tuned into the right frequency and the TACAN selected on the MPCD showing the BRC of the ship. And this is where we'll be measuring our distance from the carrier switch that off. Uh, down the right hand side make sure everything is as it should be, no caution lights, all good. Okay so now we want to put our tow brakes on, release the parking brake, clear that. We're going to set the water tank to take off and then we're going to accelerate all the way up to the nozzle rotation line up there and the nozzles will rotate 60 degrees. So we'll throttle up now. Brakes off. Rotate. And then start cleaning up the aircraft, gear in. Start to nozzle out slightly. Take the water tank off. Then obviously put the flaps into auto and then trim out and stay below 500 feet for 7 nautical miles OK, so now we're out of the restriction zone, we can now throttle up and climb to our brief to altitude and heading, which is 020 at 10,000 feet. OK, so that was case one, not too difficult, um, pretty basic. The only real thing you need to look out for is once you're off the deck to stay below 500 feet until you pass the um, 7 nautical mile line and then you're free to do whatever you want. Case 2 is conducted if the ceiling is between 1,000 and 3,000 feet and the visibility is at least 5 nautical miles. 
Passing 7 nautical miles DME, the 500 foot restriction is lifted and the aircraft can climb to the briefed rendezvous point, which is usually at 20 or 40 degree radial to the left of the BRC at a distance between 20 and 50 nautical miles. So the difference in comparison to the case one is that after 7 nautical miles we make a left hand turn um, to either 20 degree or 40 degree radial and then we can get on to our mission rendezvous point. So it's time to check our setup to make sure the switch is where they're supposed to be. All looks good there. Stick the stow stopper to 60 degrees. Nose wheel steering on. Flaps are in the stall position with the droop light and the stow light on. Then our TACAN on the left MPCD, making sure that we're tuned in and the TACAN is switched on. TACAN selected on the MPCD so that the DME shows up on the HUD. Switch that off. And then onto the right hand side, um, no cautionaries, and everything looks good that side. Tow brakes on, parking brake caution, off, caution. clear the caution, walk tank to take off, and then we're going to run to the nozzle rotation line, and then we're going to drop the nozzles to 60 degrees. So throttle up, and release the brakes. Rotate the nozzles now. Time to clean up the aircraft. Uh, gear in. Start to nozzle out. Get the um, water tank into neutral seconds. and the flaps to auto. You want to trim out to keep it below 500 feet um, and keep it like that until we've hit the 5 nautical mile restriction. Okay, so that's us now out of the 5 nautical mile restriction zone. We can make our left turn onto either the 20 degree or 40 degree radial and then we can then get onto our briefed flight plan. In this instance it's bearing 263 at 10,000 feet. So that's case 2 in a nutshell. Um, not too dissimilar to case one except that the restriction zone is shorter so its re restriction is to five nautical miles instead of seven and then we make a left turn instead of just going on our merry way we have to either go on to a 20 degree or 40 degree radial and then onto our uh, briefed instructions so case three this is where things get a little bit interesting Case 3 is conducted if the ceiling is at below 1000 and or the visibility is less than 5 miles. After takeoff, aircraft conduct a 300 knot climb on the BRC to cross the 5 DME fix at 1500 feet or above, after which they climb to assigned altitude at 10 DME, a turn is performed to intercept the assigned departure radial. Rendezvous is at the same as, if, as for case 2. So basically you took left turn either onto a 20 degree or 40 degree radial and then on to whatever briefed um, flight plan you have. Right, for this I'm going to need some lights. So switch on the floodlights. Make sure all the switches are where they're supposed to be. All switches are off, formations on and lights are to night vision goggles. Uh, set the stow stopper to 60 as usual. Check these. Make sure the nose wheel steering's on. Flaps are in stall, and the stow light is on, and the droop light is on on the panel there. Next is the left end PCD for our TACAN. Make sure that the TACAN has been um, tuned in and is switched on. If not, do that. And then make sure that the TACAN is selected in the top right hand corner here so that it shows DME in the HUD here. Switch that off. Okay, check the panel there, no lights. Everything's where it should be. Two brakes are now going to go on. Parking brake off. If I can find it. Caution, caution. And clear the warning. Switch the water tank to take off. 
turn the floodlight off. Red lights at the bow of the deck there is the nozzle rotation line, which will rotate to 60 degrees as normal. Okay, let's throttle up. That breaks off. Rotate nozzles now. Zero six nine. Gear on. Nozzle out. Zero six nine. Turn the water off to neutral and the flaps to auto. Making a steady climb to 1,500 feet, and we want to hit 1,500 feet as we cross the uh, 5 dme threshold. Now I made the mistake of not doing it at 300 knots, which is what you're supposed to do, um, but that's a minor oversight I think I can overlook in this case. So, so all you need to remember really is that you're going to need to make the slow climb to 1,500 feet at 300 knots to hit at 5 nautical miles DME. So that's 5 nautical miles hit, we can now climb to our assigned altitude, which in this case was 10,000 feet. Ok, so now we're at 10 nautical miles, we can make our left hand turn to either the 20 degree or 40 degree radial, and then we can get onto our pre-briefed flight plan. Unlike the previous plan, 263 at 10,000. Now all of these case departures were done using position 6 or the 450 mark. So um, it was all dependent on your weight um, and your setup. So um, that's the furthest up the deck that you really should be taking off from. The heavier you get, obviously, the further back you'll start. So just bear that in mind, but that's pretty much where I, I, I did all of my case departures from. And if you want to check the weight of your aircraft, you can do that in V-Rest, either in vertical landing, vertical takeoff or short takeoff, and it's under gross weight at the bottom here uh, in all three categories. So if you want to make a judgment call and... Um, set up your aircraft and leave at a certain point and set your uh, nozzles to a certain position then by all means do the calculations and work it out for yourself but if you want to know the gross weight of your aircraft this is where you'll find out and with that it's time for me to finish up so that's case one two three departures from the tarot class uh, amphibious assault ship i hope that's helped somebody um if i've got anything wrong do let me know uh, as i I do like to um, make sure I'm doing things properly. Um, but yeah, that's it. Case departures. Um, so thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.